My name is Philippa Turnbull and I've been tasked with making a replica Dorothy Wordsworth post bag. Thank you very much to the Museum at Dove Cottage and the Wordsworth Trust for um, allowing me to have this privilege. I hope you're going to join me and make something, anything or just a few stitches of this delightful pattern. First I'm going to show you the actual finished piece. I'm just on the last few stages tidying it up and I'd like you to look at that now. And to see that the design actually has bands of each colour with little Christmas trees and the branches and the trunks are enhanced by silk. The way the bands are divided because it's on a grid is in little steps and first of all we're going to mark this line here in pencil on the canvas. So I'll show you what we did. We have a charted design and this line is the one we're going to apply to the canvas in pencil and then we will work away from there. This means that you only have to work in a few colours rather than having the stitching going along the top with lots of threads hanging down. That keeps everything much tidier. So I'll show you this on mono white canvas and you have got brown canvas probably or perhaps you'd like to work on Ada or a different fabric altogether. So if this is the top left of the design you come an inch into the shape and draw a straight line dissecting each square across the diagonal all the way however far you want. So coming in an inch from the edge with the pencil line and drawing the straight line down means that you've got a guide to work your little steps between each section, each band of colour, the background colour. So from the uh, top of the diagonal I've come one, two, three threads and turned, gone down one, two, three, come from that point across again, across the line that you drew, one, two, three and one, two, three. So actually this effect will be two up, two down because the third one is always the corner. So if you draw either side of the line, you have a guide to work to. Your next decision is to work in either a double or a single thread. I've chosen to work in a single thread, so I'm going to double the thread over. I'm looking for the thread that's on the inside of the skein. The outside one would just crumple your wool. So you give it a little shake and you find the longer thread and you gently pull. So I'm taking that to double my stitching length, which, as many cruel workers will tell you, is between the top of your finger and the bottom of your elbow. So that should measure about 12 to 15 inches. I'm then taking the wool, and to straighten it, I hold the ends and put my needle inside the loop, like that, and give it a little straighten and just pull it quite firmly and then the walls will hang parallel to each other. So take the needle and thread it by pushing the needle head over that loop, pull it all the way to the end, and then you have a loop at the end which you can use to fasten your wool. So all I'm going to do is to show you how to stitch that line. So you pop your thread down, come up through the linen, and through the loop and pull that down. Now that has caught on but to hide the loop at the end I'm just going to pop it through the edge. So all I've done here is come across the corner of one of these little intersections of warp and weft thread. So then this will decide, you, you really need to decide if you're going to stitch uh, left-handed or right-handed um, I use a frame, so I use one hand above and one below normally. So I'm going to come from below and I'm going to take that stitch again along the top of those steps and down in the same angle as the first stitch. Third stitch again comes up and down over that single little junction like that. So that is tent stitch. You're coming up in one hole and you're going diagonally across to the other. 
Now Dorothy's bag was worked in cross stitch, which I'm sure many of you will know about. It's just putting an X over those stitches. So actually what you would do then is just work in the opposite direction and come up and down over the top of it and again up and down. As you can see I'm used to working on a frame. I'm working freehand here and you can just hold it in your hand and crumple it slightly and get the angle and you will work out the way that's most comfortable for you. I'm sure that Dorothy didn't use a frame because I think it would have been something she would like to take out to make um, in different rooms in the house or when she was walking. And you can jump around the design and carry the thread across the back um, as pretty well as far as you like because nobody's ever going to see the back and the subsequent decoration will actually um, cover those for you. So don't worry about what the back looks like. It really is not a competition. This is a bit of fun. Anyway, we're going to go up the in the other direction. So we come down the first step with a cross stitch. So that's one half of the stitch and this is the other. So you're making a cross up one side across the diagonal and down. So I've made three stitches across the top, two down and then two out. So that's why it's two by two. But I'm working either side of the pencil line and it really doesn't matter which direction your first stitch goes in, whichever is comfortable. But Dorothy actually wasn't a great stitcher and she did swap around a little bit. So I sometimes wonder about her mood when she was doing this or if she was actually working in poor candlelight and I've actually included her mistakes in my own. Well that's my excuse. So having worked the zigzag all the way down you then plump that out following the chart. So I'm just going to show you the last little corner of my area here. So that's, I've worked the diagonal and then I've plumped it out to the chart so that I know there are four little stitches in that corner and then the top of the Christmas tree begins. So how I worked those was I worked the branches in tenth stitch, so that's half the cross stitch, and then I covered the second direction in the silk. Now the silk's pretty tricky to work with so you really ought to have smooth hands and just when you pull it out just take a little knot at the end like that, a proper knot with a loop and then a very short bit of silk so about 10 inches and use very sharp scissors and don't overhandle the silk. So you're not going to stroke it or use it in any way. Use the same needle and you just make the second half of the cross in this beautiful silk. And it will go dull if you overhandle it. But that's an option. You don't have to do it. I've got some little trees here without the silk in. But I think you'll find that it gives a lot of life when you put some silk to make that lovely sheen. So I'm going to send this bag base to America and my friend Meredith Willett will make it into what she will call a purse, I will call a bag and hopefully it'll come back looking very like Dorothy's bag for the exhibition in April. Thank you very much indeed.